I got my Harbor Freight tubing roller here with some homemade dies. These are 3D printed, reinforced with some steel washers. This is for half inch tubing. And I've used them a little bit, you can see, but I'm going to see how long they last. But they seem to be holding up so far. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how, how this works. Just got this part rolled and it's pretty straight this way. The, the two parts are touching so I should be able to make some pretty good rings with this if I had just rolled a little bit longer of a piece. The, uh, the dies here are looking pretty alright. They're not looking too beat up or anything. The, um, there's a little, little mark there but no cracks yet. I made a Fusion 360 model to help me design the dies and I like to think of these parts as a math problem and set parameters. Um, we have to solve for X a lot of times and so our X might change so where could I, where could I set um, a variable X and the place where I chose, one of the places I chose to do that was in this arc right here. This is set for a 0.75 radius tubing, or 0.75 diameter tubing, and that can be changed easily by going to our parameter section. And if I go to the tube diameter, I could change that to 0.5, and then that will give me a smaller die. And so that automatically updated everything. And if I click the back arrow, I have the three quarter inch size one. And if I get rid of these solids, you can see what I mean by x. <clears throat> this, this portion right here is our x, and so by changing that variable, we change everything down the line, and we're just revolving these two sections around this axis, and then that gives us our core. And once we have our core, I have another set of sketches for the holes, and these are also defined parametrically with uh, their distance radially and the size of these holes and I simply take that that face and extrude it and make a another solid to get these these two draw um, other plates going on so those are separate parts that will be made of metal I did have a little trouble making these these plates here the steel plates in yellow the, I had them plasma cut, but the plasma cut was not very nice, so I had to end up remachining them and remaking them and pretty much make them from scratch, which was kind of a bummer, but I managed to, to get it all done. Um, another part where having these be par parametric is really cool is I also have a, a diacro bender where just the inner hole is a different size, but I could use pretty much the same plates. Um, so this is what I sent out to the plasma cutters. This is diacro stuff, and this is an attempt at making some square dies. It, it went alright for bending square tubing, and then these sections here are, are for making the, uh, the 3D printed dies work. And this is just a copied part, and as, as are these. And then here's just a quick, another quick parametric drawing of some diacro dies with that that larger hole I was talking about but they're pretty much the the same thing as this and were made using uh, the, sa the same sketch. These dies are made with 3D printed cores and then there's metal plates cut out to reinforce them on the outside. These bolts squeeze them tight and it gives the 3D print really nowhere to go once it's getting pushed on by the tubing and seems to, to work out so far. Um, I've done a couple different methods here. Um, this plate with the big hole here 
uses the, the bearings that are supplied with the Harbor Freight dies. And then I also experimented with printing in the, the bearings and that worked just as well. And the plate just had a slightly smaller hole, but it could, it could use this too. Um, and these were just left over from an old engine rebuild and they're good enough for this. But I think this is the best way to go since it uses a bearing that everyone is already given. Um, and so then you have two patterns from there. There's these two bottom dies are the same and those spin on the bearings. And then the top die is a driven roller. And so that for that, I welded on a piece of pipe here on both sides and there's some nuts welded to that. And I can spin these set screws and it'll, it'll grab the shaft and allow it to, uh, to spin and feed, feed the, the tubing through. Um, this is the same part basically, just with a longer tube. Um, so this, this dimension here isn't really that critical. Um, you'll just need to make it so it fits in there. Um, it isn't too odd that it doesn't fit in there. You'll end up having to, to shimmy the dies with large washers. And so I like to write that down, what setup uses what, just to make the changeovers quicker. Um, and yeah, oh, so the, the bolt pattern on these is two and a half for the ones being rolled. And then I use a smaller two inch bolt pattern on the driven bearing just so there's a little more th meat to that 3D print. Um, Cause if, if I'm pushing out uh, two and a half and I'm trying to push that force through there, I'm worried I might break it. So that just gave me a little more meat. Um, and that's why I see all these hole patterns all funky. Um, I had to drill a couple, couple different ones and I had these originally plasma cut out and the plasma cutout did not turn out so well, so I had to do a lot of re-drilling and a lot of remachining, and I probably should have just made them from scratch to begin with, because that's pretty much what I ended up doing. But in the end, it worked out, and I was able to get this project done. Got quite a quite a bit of, of bends done with it. For these driven dies, you might end up with uneven spacing. I have four washers here and three washers here, and you'll just have to mirror that on the other side and account accordingly. Um, and so you pull it out and it out and make a mess. But here are the bearings I was talking about earlier. And so they come out, eh, normally they come out a little bit easier. There we go. And these are the bearings that came with the roller and go into the original die. So that part you're just gonna be swapping over and using. Here I have my CNC mill drilling out the new bolt patterns since the plasma cut ones are bad. And I got my 3D printer going as well. After that operation, the, the holes were looking a lot better than before. So those are usable, but not out of the woods yet. The center hole wasn't quite the right size, so I have to go through and uh, change that up by remachining it. And then also for the, the holes that took a, uh, the bear and I had to remachine those, but that little CNC machine did all right. I got these three printed dies doubled up and reinforced with these metal plates. Hopefully I'll be able to roll some mirrored parts. Sorry about running out of battery partway through that roll, but as you can see, I got a, got a good arc going. The dies held up. They made a little bit of noise, a little bit of crinkling and crackling, but they're still there. Um, so hopefully I can get through the rest of this build with these. Uh, this is the tightest arc I gotta do by far, so we should be good. Here we have the rear chain stays bent up, and this is how the, the die's looking after. There's, um, not really seen any major cracks. It got kind of polished by the steel. There's a few bits of metal embedded in it that I might try and pick out, but the um, hopefully I'll be able to get a lot more bends out of these. This is what my die drawer looks like for that roller. 
I have the stock ones as well as 3D printed cores and a variety of different plates so I can make different configurations. Um, this organizer here is very handy. I have lots of washers and different bolts that I need to come up with different configurations and so that's just kind of my little toolbox with, within this section for, for building up these dies. And then this uh, assortment kit was really helpful in building these uh, dies. I wouldn't normally recommend that hardware since it's pretty cheesy, grade 4.8, but it works well for this. Uh, these aren't high torque applications. You might be wondering why I went through the trouble to make all these dies, and it's so I could bend these tubes for this tall bike I've been working on. It uh, still needs to be painted and cleaned up a little bit, but it's definitely a roller. I got a couple hundred miles in the frame, and I wouldn't be able to do it without this tooling that I made. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If it helped you out or you like it, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Bye.